morning. Welcome back to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. It's Joe and Lisa again. We're here to talk to you today about eating healthy in Ecuador. Is it possible? I think it's possible. Anything's yeah. possible. Yeah, I think you can eat healthier here a lot more so than some other countries. Um, we think that uh, there's less pesticides used here. Uh, there are some pesticides used here in certain places. We've seen it happen. We we see the little guys walking with their sprayers on the back. You can um, smell it on the food. You can smell it. Yeah, definitely. We bought green beans here before. We've opened up the package and whoa, had to throw them away. True. And, uh, so that's the one thing we do grow ourselves is green beans because we know they're probably toxic here, yep. uh, depending on where you buy it. So yeah, um, some farmers use them, but many farmers don't. The Saturday farmers market here in Vilcabamba uh, supposedly does routine checks on their farmers to be sure they're uh, growing in organic methods and you know good sustainable methods. So I've never been on one of those visits, so I've never been invited to do that. So I don't know for firsthand knowledge, but that's what everyone tells me. Um, so, but you know, if you want to be sure that your food is organic, grow it yourself. Grow it yourself, yeah. There's definitely things that we grow um, ourselves just to make sure we know. Lettuce has been one of them, which has been really nice. Um, green beans, definitely. Because even when you buy them at the organic markets or the organic tiendas, if I get them home and they smell like pesticide, I mean, we're probably not going to eat them. That's exactly right. And, you know, um, I, I got to tell you how many squashes that we have bought at the farmer's market to bring them home and find out they're full of worms. And, uh, of course, you know, they never want to give your money back. No, but, um, we can grow them with worms just fine. Yeah, we proved that. We have proved that. Chickens love that. So the question comes up, there's so much food in this area and in this valley. Why would you grow your own food? Well, we just mentioned a couple of those reasons, uh, being pesticide use. Um, but the paros or strikes mm -hmm. here, there are taxi strikes or different kinds of strikes that do happen here. It's the people's way of revolting back against the government to try to get better laws passed. And so we, we stand with those people. Mm -hmm. um, and we want them to do what they have the right to do. And so, but when that happens, uh, the food supplies can get shut off. They can. Very surprising to us. Um, some of the last paros um, lasted long enough that here, I never thought we'd run out of eggs. Everybody has chickens. They get their chickens from Loja and other places. So yeah, their eggs come from the All the eggs. Waves. Yeah, so... Lesson learned. Every time there's a paro or a disruption in the um, supply chain, it's definitely an opportunity to learn where your holes are in your sustainability. Yeah, we saw uh, definitely um, butter. Uh, we like oh, a yeah. certain brand of butter here, and they were out for several weeks here in town because of the last paro. And, uh, you know, it takes them a little while to recover with resupplying these stores after something like that happens. Sure. And during the pandemic, in the very beginning, we were only allowed, the first couple of weeks of the pandemic, we weren't allowed to come into town but one day to start with, and only for like four hours. So we yeah. saw a run on the stores here in town like you wouldn't believe. People were panicking and going and buying up stuff. And it was kind of interesting watching people scurry from store to store. Well, I would say the pandemic was one thing. It, it, it helped Tiendas learn what they needed to stock on the shelves. And there is more stuff on the shelf now than what we used to have before that. But the Paros, to me, those were um, a little bit different because those actually showed us holes in the food supply. And you see farmers all around here and you think, well, we're going to do pretty good because there's all this farming. Doesn't mean it ends up in the stores or in the tiendas. That's correct. And... You know, um, there's a guy with a YouTube channel in Australia. Uh, his name is Mark, and he's called Self-Sufficient Me. And I like his tagline. He says, you don't have to be self-sufficient in everything. Just be self-sufficient in something. And I think that's a, a good way to look at it and, and start small by, um, you know, maybe growing your own herbs at least. You can do that in an apartment on a patio in some uh, containers, and at least you have something happening there. And I think, you know, the more you can grow yourself, the better. 
And it's not that we're trying to compete with local farmers in any way possible, but I think we can actually help local farmers by um, providing ourselves an alternative when they cannot produce. And then they don't feel pressured to spray pesticide and use more inorganic fertilizers and synthetic fertilizers, things like that. Um, you know, a lot of farmers have been told that's the only way we're going to feed the world is for you to use this synthetic fertilizer and all of these pesticides and herbicides and things. And that's an absolute lie. The real way to feed, feed the world is to have the world start producing some of their own food. So I want to say that being prepared, um, that doesn't make you a conspiracy theorist. It makes you smart. We never know what's going to happen in this world, and you can theorize a lot about different things. But if you're prepared, it's not necessarily going to go to waste. You can still eat that food. Sure. You can put stuff on the shelf. It doesn't mean that, uh, you know, that you won't use it or you don't need it. You know, we, we farm quite a bit, but part of farming is frustrating. Um, the bugs get some. The dogs get some, the birds get some, we get some, and we share with our friends. We so, share with everybody, basically. Even though it looks like we're growing a lot of food, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have a lot of excess. Yeah, that's exactly right. So the question we get asked over and over is, can you buy organic eggs in Ecuador? Mm. Well, that's a tough one. You can. Um, most of the tiendas here will show you the green eggs in a carton and say those are organic. They think because they're green, that makes them organic, and that's absolutely not true. Um, they're green because of the breed of the chicken. So they think the brown ones are not organic and the green ones are organic. And so you'll pay three times as much for the green ones. And they're smaller. And they're smaller. Well, they're about half the size sometimes of the brown ones. Exactly right. If you want an organic egg, you have to find someone who's free-ranging their chickens, who's growing their own food. Um, I have a friend here, his name is Abe Suarez. He's the only guy that I know for sure that is growing his own food and has definitely organic eggs. You do pay more for them, um, but they could be very worthwhile depending on how you feel about that. Um, 30 eggs here runs about how much for a flat of 30? It depends. Um, uh, about three bucks. The, yeah, the brown ones are um, basically about 11 to 12 cents a piece. And the green ones quite a bit more. They're about three times more. Yeah, about three times more for the green ones. Yeah. So, um, you know, just don't fall for the green eggs or the organic ones. Anyone here who, who feeds the local food, um, they refer to it as Balenciados. Mm. Um, uh, that's supposed to be a balanced chicken feed. That is not organic. There are no commercially grown uh, organic feeds here in Ecuador. Uh, everything that comes in a bag here is not organic. Now, you can probably buy some organic corn and some organic oats, I'm pretty sure. And so you could grind your own chicken feed fairly easily, um, grow yourself some pigeon pea and things like that, and grind that all together and make your own feed. And uh, that, would, that would work out pretty some well. Some people do that. They got to have a lot more time on their hands than what we have. But yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome if you can grow the own, your own food and let them free range. Yeah, so, you know, another question is, um, people have asked, are there any restaurants in Vilcabamba that serve organic food? And the answer is yes. Um, there are several of them come to mind. If I look at El Mexibamba, not El Mexibamba, El Mexicano, <laughs> uh, our friends Raul and Liliana, they uh, produce all of their own produce there, and it's all organic. Um, I, as you see in one of our videos, I visited their farm and witnessed Ooh. it myself. Um, I trust that that food is organic. Um, I can't say that every bit of everything in their restaurant is, but I feel pretty sure that at least the vegetables, et cetera, are, are organically grown. Your odds are better that yeah. they're organically grown there. And so a lot of the beef here, you know, really the beef in this area is all um, grass-fed. Grass so that you can pretty well guess that's going to be organic. If you go to Super Maxi, not so much. I mean, you can see the difference in the quality of the meat. Um, between the grass-fed versus the commercial-grown stuff. And grass-fed is not always super tender, like you would uh, feedlot cattle, you know, are always really tender because it's full of fat. 
Um, so it may be a little tougher than what you're used to. And then sometimes we get steaks that are wonderful. Yeah, I've had some really good, I would take the grass fed and this was, I changed over time. Originally I was going to super maxi and buying the meat. Um, and then when I came here, I was going, you know, at the Mercado, don't you have some with more fat in it? He's going, no, 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 these don't have fat because they're grass fed. It's like, okay. And you just have to learn how to cook it. That's the key. Learn how to let it sit for a little bit, marinate it, and learn how to cook it. Um, now, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, Love it's it. really tender for me and um, very tasty, a lot better than what I can get out of Super Maxi. And Sorry. those steaks generally cost us three dollars to three fifty a pound. Yeah. Um, our hamburger that we get at the market's two dollars and fifty cents a pound. It's pretty cheap. Yeah. So the one thing I do want to caution against here is um, fried foods. French fries is a very good example. I can go to town and eat French fries, and boy, do I get sick to my stomach. Um, I'm a, maybe an exception to the rule because I've got diverticulitis and had part of my colon removed years ago. Um, so I'm a little bit more susceptible to that. But I'm not the only person there. We have friends who tell us the same thing. Um, they don't have the same practices. Uh, restaurants in the U.S. would strain and drain every night their oil fryers and um, try to keep that oil as clean as possible. I'm not sure that they do that here a lot. Um, when you see, when you get a good fry, you know it's because the oil is clean and good. Uh, but they do use an oil here that's uh, a blended oil. And it's, um, I'm going to put a picture up of the yellow five-gallon can with the label. So you'll get to see that right here. So it comes in this five-gallon yellow container. And it's primarily derived from soybean and also palm oil. So while palm oil in itself, depending on how they, they derive that, if it's under heat, it's probably not good. But palm oil itself is not necessarily bad. It's a pretty good oil. But nothing about soy is any good at all. Um, soy is one of the most thyroid unfriendly foods on the planet. Um, and you can double check me on that all you want. I'm, I'm positive I'm right on that. 95% um, of all soy produced right now on the planet is GMO. So it's genetically altered. So <coughs> don't take our word for it. Research it yourself. Um, these oils cause major problems for digestive systems and immune systems um, and other health problems. I won't get into all of it. But, um, you know, once in a while I can tolerate a French fry. I had a couple yesterday and didn't have any real bad effects from it. We could tell it was good, clean oil. So coconut oil. Readily available. So here in Boca Bamba, you can get a pretty good deal on some coconut oil. I'm going to say... Compared to when we left the States, the price was comparable to me. Um, it's gone up a little bit, you know, because the cost of everything has gone up a little bit. But you can get really good quality coconut oil here. Now, if I go to Loja and try to buy it, you're going to pay way more in Loja. But you can get it here locally in Bilcabamba. Yeah, the local vendors do a good job with the coconut oil. And mm -hmm. I would say it's at least the same price the U.S., not higher. But, um, and, and we got a very good quality here. We got a couple of different uh, brands that I think are extremely good. Yeah. And when Lisa um, fries in coconut oil, oh man, yeah. If you want to make good popcorn, use coconut oil. Yeah. Um, wish I could have popcorn. But, anyways, yeah, so coconut oil is a great alternative. Um, so, a lot of people say there just appears to be so much food there. There's rice and bags stacked up on every street corner and in front of every tienda, you see all this rice and corn and things stacked up. And, and yeah, there are, there's a lot of, of food there. And so I would say, though, you would be surprised how fast that disappears when the trucks are not able to come in here and deliver that. Mm -hmm. um, in a matter of two weeks, reserves can be pretty well put a dent put in them. And so I think that um, we need to kind of hedge against that, if you will. And so we started our own larder. For those of you who don't know what a larder is, it's like a pantry where we put up canned goods. And there's a couple ways of doing that. You can go to the grocery store and buy canned goods and bring them home, and they'll last a long time in those tin cans. Um, they're not tin cans anymore. Hmm. But uh, we don't do that. We use glass containers, and we can it ourselves. Uh, we usually water bath can it. 
some things we freeze. Yeah, we freeze then, quite a bit. Yeah, we freeze quite a bit, and we dehydrate a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever we dehydrate or freeze, we always vacuum seal. We bought a little vacuum sealer here you see in our sweet potato video um, where we use that vacuum sealer quite a bit. Our dehydrated bananas, though, go a little bit too fast, so we just use little resealable Mylar bags. That's right. Yeah, and the Mylar bags are available here um, if you want to use that. So I think that, you know, having your own larder is just good, smart, common sense. And look, I mean, you can always give it away, right? <laughs> That's um, right. So we do a lot of pickling. Uh, we pickle broccoli, green beans. We pickle cucumbers, um, carrots. What else? We pickle chayote as a, a fruit we find here. Pretty much any kind of fruit you can do. <coughs> um, we've done the sweet potatoes yes. a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it uh, depends on how you like to eat them. A lot of times... I mean, it's really handy having them on the shelf for when there's not a uh, harvest season at hand. But, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty handy. Yeah, so we had some folks here a couple of weekends ago and um, had a meal here, two couples. And um, we had our pickled green beans, pickled broccoli that we served at that, yeah. you know. And so uh, that, it's great just to jerk it off the shelf. The last minute it's ready to mm -hmm. go and yeah. serve it out. So everyone wants to know about seeds. We had a, a meeting about seeds in our homestead group last Monday, and everyone wants to know are there seeds available in the area that you can purchase to grow food? The answer is absolutely there is. Um, I can't guarantee you that the seeds here local are organic that you buy in the little agricultural stores. Um, I would say probably the vast majority of them are not. And you really have to search to find commercial packages of seeds that are organic. Um, your, your better option here is to save seeds and swap seeds with others. And there's several ways of doing that through our homestead group. Um, we swap seeds, Lisa and I give away stuff just yeah. about every meeting. And so uh, it's a great little community of people who wanna share um, their, their production basically. Yeah. The other way is that at our local farmer's market here on Saturdays, twice a year they do a, a seed swap Mm -hmm. And so uh, everyone's allowed to come and set up and swap seeds or sell seeds or whatever they might want to do. And uh, if you have something other than seeds to swap, that's that's possible as well. Yeah, and I won't say, um, if you're one of the people that like to wait to the last minute to go get your seeds, I would not do that. Because, again, when they had the, uh, the, the lockdowns and the pandemic stuff, um, people ran out of seeds. So... Uh, yeah, they ran out of seeds and you couldn't get them locally. So definitely keep your seeds on hand that you're going to use and save from what you grow. There's a town here in Ecuador called, and I'm going to butcher this, I know, but the town is called Nabon. And um, so they have a great big seed exchange there. And um, so they have come out there, all these independent growers have come out in big opposition to anything that's not organic. So there's big movements like that here. They're trying to make sure we keep the local heirlooms alive and and uh, some of these really bad seeds out of the country. And uh, I appreciate those people very much. So um, I want to say that most Ecuadorian restaurants here are going to serve rice with all your meals. Um, rice. Um. Fried plantain. Plantain. Yucca. Yeah, you get a plate full of carbs. Plate full of carbs, yeah. I'm not sure where that rice comes from, to tell you the truth. Maybe some of it's grown on the coast here. I don't know if it's coming from China or just where. I've heard that the wheat here comes from Canada. Can't confirm that. Most Canadian wheat is GMO, with a few exceptions. Um, we're not big rice eaters, and we don't eat too much wheat, hopefully. <laughs> But the restaurants are always good about uh, letting you substitute things. Hey, no rice. Can you give me some? Uh, Potatoes. Yeah, or avocado. Oh, know? yeah. Avocado is a good replacement. Yeah. Aguacate. I get tongue-tied because I start to speak in Spanish. and then. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, aguacate here is, um, is readily available everywhere. And so they're, they're always willing to make those substitutes. Well, I want to say, um, in closing... We believe you can eat healthier here than we could in the U.S. 
I, I think so. We looked at, when we looked at places to go here, Mexico and, um, and being in the U.S., I still think that you can eat healthier here than you can in either place. Now, you can go and find healthy food um, in the U.S., um, probably in Mexico, too. But here we just felt like it was more abundant. More readily available, yeah. yeah. And just like in the U.S., though, here, uh, you got to watch what you put in your mouth. True. If you want to come to Vilcabamba and live here and eat a standard American diet, you're going to have standard American health. Sure, sure. And I think one of the saddest things to us when we got here was when you go to Loja, you see Kentucky Fried Chicken and Papa John's and all the fast food restaurants, not all, but several of the fast food restaurants you have back in the States. And it's really sad to see that come to um, a country like this. But uh, mostly here in, in Vilcabamba, you don't get a lot of fast food, but you get a lot of home-cooked meals. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things that's great about this country, being on the equator, is, um, you know, back in Texas, we're hampered by the cold weather, and then we're hampered by the extreme heat. Mm -hmm. So really, it's going to limit you to about maybe six months of actual growing, whereas here we can grow year-round. Um, July and August gets a little dry here, so it gets a little tougher if you don't irrigate. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, we're growing something year-round. We do. The fruits that are on the property, they definitely have their cycles. Um, so bananas don't come in every month, which is good because a couple of good racks of bananas goes a long way. Hold your wow. <laughs> and then the, uh, the citrus on the property. I mean, it, all of it has a season, which is interesting because on the different parts of the property, some of it comes in earlier and some of it comes in later, which is nice. But some things like our lemons tend to, they just kind of produce all the time. No, nah, they come and they go, but long, your seasons are longer. Yeah. So, I mean, you have a, like right now they're coming in, the trees are loaded, they're starting to turn yellow. Um, so, yeah. And then they'll be gone for a little while. So, but that's where yeah. your lemon juice comes from. You have to go juice your own lemon from the tree. Yeah, we love to do that. And when we freeze that lemon juice in ice cube trays and then bag those ice cubes and freeze them and save them. And, Definitely. And uh, we use that in all sorts of things. We make salsa. We put that lemon or lime juice in there for mm -hmm. sure. And so that's what we like to do. And we, we think it's a fun hobby to, um, you know, have your own pantry and to store things and, and to learn about food storage is, is almost a lost art. Um, there's, I think, even a lot of Ecuadorians here who don't know how to do those things. So we're always trying to spread our knowledge, and that's what our Monday meetings for the Homestead Group are about, yeah. is uh, just simply spreading knowledge and trying to keep these old um, methods alive, if you will, so that people are able to be self-sufficient. That's right. So, yeah, there's good food to be found here, and restaurants that sell it, no doubt. Um, I can think of about four or five in town right off the top of my head that that do have organic food and um, happily promote that. So uh, others, not so much, but you know, there's a farmer in town that we really like to see. Their whole yard is all vegetables. And I know he grows organically and, and I've seen him deliver to a lot of these restaurants. Yeah. So um, when you're here, you'll get to know that. Come and ask us if you see us on the street. We'll show you some of those places. And, um, and if we don't know about a place, we'll tell you. We're not sure. We've never eaten there or or we, we just don't know too much about what they do. Yes. Um, but if you've got comments about it, you know, you know some that are organic, and sure, put it down in the comment section, let everybody know. Um, we always enjoy your comments, and we always enjoy it when you give us one of these right here. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe. See you next time.